We'll start by looking at the cloud providers. So one of the features of Cloud Array is it can support multiple cloud providers. It's very easy. It's a very easy process to add a cloud provider. And Cloud Array supports over 20 different clouds, including vCloud Air, EMC Atmos, and various other popular providers. In this particular case, we've configured this Cloud Array to work with three cloud providers, Google, EMC Atmos, and AT&T. On this Cloud Array, we've also configured two caches. I've named them primary and secondary. Primary uses 500, approximately 500 gigabytes of local storage, while a secondary cache uses approximately 100 gigabytes of local storage. This Cloud Array has two policies. One we call archive storage. It uses the smaller secondary cache, and it sends data to, to Google Cloud. The second policy, called cache storage, uses the larger primary cache and sends data to AT&T Synaptic Cloud. So with that, I'll demonstrate provisioning both a data volume and a share. We'll start with a, with a SIF share. So here, for, for simplicity, we're going to create a very simple share that we're going to share out with a, with a Windows host. We'll call this share blue one, and we'll give it five terabytes of total capacity. And we're going to use our cached storage policy, which uses the larger cache and goes to AT&T Synaptic Storage. I've just created the share. And now I'm making it available. And for simplicity, I'll provide guest access so we can access it very easily. Of course, we have full Active Directory uh, controls and permissions for more sophisticated configurations. Now I'll also provision an iSCSI volume. In this case, I'll create a new volume, which we'll call Blue 2. And I'll also give it 5 terabytes of total capacity. And this time, I'll use the archive storage policy. So the idea would be this is for less frequently accessed data. And I'm going to map it to a Windows client. So now that the volume and share have been created, let's go to our Windows server and see where it is. First, we'll do a quick scan for the iSCSI data volume. As you can see, I've just added a 5 terabyte iSCSI data volume. Now we'll go to the network to see our share that we just created. And here it is, a 5 terabyte share. So quite simply, I just provisioned 10 terabytes to my Windows server utilizing cloud storage. Let's look more closely at some of the features around Cloud Array data volumes. With our data volumes, uh, you can take snapshots, which are point-in-time images. Uh, you can disable replication to the cloud. You can also migrate them between different clouds. So in this case, I have three clouds configured. 
and I can move a data volume relatively easily from cloud to cloud. I can also move it from cache to cache because I have two different caches and as the needs change for the applications that are accessing this data, I can either grow a cache or move that data volume to a larger cache. I'll quickly show you a snapshot capability. So I can very easily create a snapshot of the data volume. The snapshots are instantly available and they're a point in time consistent image of your data. And we can very quickly and easily expose that snapshot to your Windows client. This is just a single snapshot. But if we go back to our main volume, you can see we also have a snapshot scheduler. And what the snapshot scheduler enables you to do is to create a schedule of snapshots with a retention policy so that you can create snapshots on a hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly basis, and also create a retention policy for deleting those snapshots. Now let's go back to our Windows Server, and we can show you our snapshot. As you can see, the snapshot of the volume has appeared and it's instantly accessible. One of the other interesting features of CloudArray that's very helpful when using public cloud is our bandwidth scheduler. And the bandwidth scheduler lets you limit the amount of WAN utilization of CloudArray. What this means is you can limit the maximum bandwidth that CloudArray uses and you can do that on an hourly basis or on a schedule that can go through, oh, actually, I need to cut. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me restart the band. I'll restart the bandwidth scheduler. I think I kind of got a little choppy there. Okay. Another interesting feature of CloudArray, particularly for those who are using public cloud providers, is our bandwidth throttler. And our bandwidth throttler lets you limit the amount of bandwidth that CloudArray uses. So you can go all the way from unlimited down to 2 megabits per second. In this case, I'm setting up a bandwidth schedule. So my bandwidth will be set to 50 megabits per second for certain days of the week and certain times of the day. I can create as many schedules as I need to ensure that I do not disrupt any network activity. Sorry. Um, can we re roll back? Uh, this one's got <laughs> getting hung up on this one. Okay. Okay. The bandwidth lot. The CloudArray bandwidth. Uh, okay. 
Okay, the McLeod Array Bandwidth Scheduler lets you limit the amount of bandwidth the Cloud Array uses. And you can do this on a daily or weekly schedule or even an hourly schedule to limit your network disruption.